Hey folks, this is Vince with Green Joe Coffee Truck. So I have a long drive and I wanted to do a short video on menus. Uh, we had some couple questions just about menus and how to generate them and what, what should be on them and how to price them. And it's, it's probably a fairly common question I get. I answer a lot of menu questions in my mobile barista course where basically I go over every drink on my menu and show you how to make it, um, as well as how to do mobile coffee truck catering, mobile coffee cart catering. But I wanted to kind of break down the menu and just give out some general feedback questions on, on, on the menu. So we'll just kind of start off with with the first topic. Well, what, what should be on my menu? Well, yeah, right, that's a great question. And I'll tell you right now, what you put on your menu in the beginning and what you ultimately decide your menu to become is probably going to be two different things. So just keep that in mind, be a little bit flexible that the first menu that you put out is kind of a bit of a beta test. All right, so what I have on my menu is for ice drinks, I do fraps, I do ice lattes and cold brew and some iced teas. I have a black tea with mango and a green tea with mint okay so that's all my iced drinks um, every now and then I'll also do smoothies and um, something I called caffeinate it's a caffeinated lemonade and it's pretty popular actually I use a smoothie mix and uh, kind of like a pre-workout mix but it's not a pre-workout because most pre-workouts have beta alanine which makes your skin crawl anyways so a caffeine supplement basically um, and I just add it to a lemonade and smoothie mix and I make these frou-frou kind of smoothie caffeine caffeinated lemonade drinks they're really popular but whatever that's just um, something I do on the side for funsies uh, but as far as like the menu go the main ones is gonna be the fraps and the iced lattes those are gonna be and the cold brew. Those are gonna be my main iced menu drinks. For hot menu drinks, it is uh, hot coffee, um, anything that's espresso based, you know, the macchiatos, cappuccinos, flat whites, lattes, uh, cortados, blah, blah, blah. And then um, ice latte, or excuse me, um, hot lattes, like flavored stuff, like your mochas and caramel macchiatos and vanilla lattes and that jazz. Um, my big four are uh, caramel, chocolate, vanilla, and chai tea. Um, I do carry a sugar-free vanilla. Um, there's some other ones that come and go, white chocolate, uh, pumpkin, of course, you know, mint jumps on the menu fairly often for different reasons, but there's a uh, some different flavors that kind of come and go, but the big four are, are the ones that I, I usually keep on pretty much year round, or if I'm doing like indoor catering and I'm limited on how many flavors I can bring, then I'll, those are the, the big four I'll typically recommend. All right, so then for non-coffee drinks, I like um, hot chocolate, and I'm kind of a little bit of an oddball when it comes to hot chocolate. I really enjoy like specialty hot chocolate, if that's even such a thing. But I mean, we will go on the deep end when it comes to hot chocolate. So one of my big sellers is a hot caramel. Just basically I use caramel sauce instead of um, chocolate sauce and I make a hot caramel. You can combine those two and do hot caramel chocolates. That's pretty fun. Mint chocolates, I've done s'more hot chocolates where you know once you add a blender to the equation, right the world's your oyster so we'll 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 blend graham crackers into the milk and use that to steam a hot chocolate and then top it with marshmallows and graham crackers anyways i go off the deep end with hot chocolate long story short okay and then uh for teas i'm a big tea fan so i know you know i'm a coffee drinker but i actually really enjoy tea so i have a lot of other tea options um i do some latte based teas I have the London fog and the chai tea latte and there's three versions of that sweet semi-sweet and traditional and all that's covered in the 
the uh, mobile barista course. Same with how to make my uh, London Fogs, which is a pearl gray latte, basically, a hint of vanilla. Um, and then for the other teas, you know, I have just regular old chai tea, uh, Earl Grey, uh, green tea, and uh, I usually like to have a peppermint or a hibiscus. Um, so I do have a lot of tea options, probably more than I need, but I milk off of them myself and they don't go bad. So why not have more options type of thing? But anyhow, so that's what I usually have for the teas. And then, you know, for, you know, uh, foods, it's usually grab and grow stuff, uh, typical local bake, uh, pastries, muffins, and, you know, turnovers, danishes type of thing. I do like the breads, like lemon poppy and pumpkin spice and banana nut. I, I like breads, oddly enough. They have good shelf life. People love them. Um, they're grab and go. And, you can keep them fairly low priced to keep your ticket, uh, your average ticket item high. You know, you can sell them for like two bucks. But I have all those on the menu as well. So, okay, that's what I have on the menu. But, you know, what's more important is how I create my menu. So, the thing about menu creation, I'm a big fan of pictures. And I know it sounds silly, but any of you that has traveled to another country, Europe, South America, whatever, you know that when you go to a foreign restaurant that, you know, 90% of the time they have pictures associated with the menu items. And I just think that that is a fantastic way to help people make their decisions fairly quickly. Now, do I put a picture up for every menu item? Absolutely not. But my big ones, like my caramel macchiatos, my cold brew, my, um, what I would call my uh, popular items, items that people get often and also have a decent profit margin, um, I make those into pictures and I put that on the menu and it is worth a thousand words. The other thing about the menu is placement. Now, I didn't know that placement was so important until one day, uh, this is when I still use chalk menus. Back when I first started, I did chalk menus on all my menus. Now I don't. I use A-frame menus. I'll tell you why. So I was, uh, I can't remember what it was, if it was a four-year-old or a rainy day, but somehow that chalk menu just got destroyed. And it had been destroyed so many times before. You get like a four-year-old that just loves looking at the smears of chalk and they'll ruin your entire menu and it takes you an hour to you know, go back and redo all those things. Just a big pain in the butt, right? So, something like that had happened one day. I don't remember what it was, but I had to rewrite my menu. Well, anyways, I had a coconut latte that used to be on the, uh, the very bottom of my flavor selection. And for whatever reason that day, I wrote coconut on the top. And previously, my coconut latte sales were like maybe two a month, so little that I very much considered removing it from my menu so I didn't have to keep it in stock. But on that particular day, I had sold like five coconut lattes, something crazy that I have never done in a single day before. And I was like, this is crazy. Why do I have so much coconut lattes? And it was because I had moved it to the top left-hand side of that menu. So then I started experimenting and all the experiments tested the same results that the top left hand part of the menu is the number one placement for an item because that's how we read. We read from the top uh, left to right. So that's where our eyes go first unconsciously. Anyhow, so knowing that now I build my menu based upon that real estate. My caramel macchiatos and my cold brew pictures go up on that side of the menu because those are my popular items with a high profitability. Um, so in terms of how to build the menu, uh, that's basically how I do it. The, uh, the items like macchiato, cortado, traditional espresso drinks that every now and then I'll sell one or two of them, those tend to go on the bottom to the right. And to be honest, it's no offense against those drinks, but typically guys that order that drink, like let's say it's a guy that orders a flat white, 
once he sees your espresso machine, he's not gonna look at your menu. He's gonna order his flat white. That's what he orders every time. So, you know, it's I don't think it's very much of a high importance to have those traditional items very visible because those that are loyal to their personalized drink are gonna see the espresso machine and order their personalized drink without even looking at your menu. The people that are interested in what flavors you have and interested in what your menu is communicating are, are people that like the, you know, the frou-frou or the more flavorful drinks, right? So just kind of keep that in, in bearing in mind. Now, one of the things I will say while I'm on the topic of uh, real estate on the, on the, the menu, is at the very top, I always put my services that I provided. So typical food truck lingo is like catering, weddings, business events, or something like that. And that's a fine way of doing it. There's nothing wrong with that. But I also like putting things like make your next event special or make, make your wedding or business event special. Ask for a card. And then, you know, then when they get up to, to order, you can give them a business card and they'll take that with you and you, know, you know, personalize it or something or find out what their favorite drink is and be like, oh, you're getting married? Well, we can have your favorite drink at your wedding, blah, blah, blah. And you know, just spark some business, right? Okay, so at the top of the menu, the very, very top, before anything gets started, that's where I put things like my website, my hashtags, my Instagram, my Facebook icons, and then something that has to do with spreading the word that I do more than just drive up or walk up business, that I also do catering. So you can, you know, catering, wedding, business events, whatever, and then put your menu. All right, cool. So now that we got that down, let's talk about the menu itself. How big should it be? Where should you put it? Now, originally when I first started, my menus were chalkboards and I put them on the truck. But then as I developed, what I learned is, if you put your menu on the truck, then people that are standing in line, they have to wait until they get to the front of the line before they can decide on what drinks to order, especially if they have bad eyesight. So the problem with that is when you're busy, then instead of people knowing what to order, they're like, well, what do you have, right? That's the last thing that I need to hear when you get up to my window and I'm trying to make some money. What I need to, you know, what I'm trying to get is I'm trying to get this person to look at the menu and go, ooh, that's what I want. That looks awesome. And then instantly know what they want. That's my goal. So I keep my menu on an A-frame, a plasticade A-frame. And I have those on my website uh, under the resource page. I'll show you um, which ones I use. And I, I use a 24 by 36 inch, and you can get those printed at Vista Print. They're fairly cheap, or your local printer, or Kinko's, or wherever you go to get your printing done. And I get it printed on a, a corrugated plastic sign. That's the same material for a yard sale sign because, you know, the wind, the wind and the sun and the rain can do all they want to it, and they hold up just just fine, right? So I print that out and I, I, I put that on that plasticade menu, usually with some Velcro is how I do it. I just super glue Velcro to the plasticade and then super glue some Velcro to the, the corrugated sign and then I just stick the Velcro pieces together. And that works pretty well. And I'll put that menu probably about 10 feet away from my window so that if you're like the third, fourth, fifth person in line, then you can see the menu. All right, that being said, I also get two other menus, uh, 18 by 12, the smaller A-frame sign. Any of you that have seen the real estate open house um, signs on the side of the road, that's about the size that you wanna shoot for. And those ones, typically they'll have just one picture. I won't, it'll be like my best selling item. And I'll put my best selling items on that menu, like frappuccinos or you know caramel macchiato. And I will put those little menus Anywhere that there's a anywhere that there's a congregation of people in my event. So if I'm doing a 5K, it's going to be at the registration table and the bathrooms, right? If I'm, you know, doing I don't know the farmers market, it's going to be at the entrance. So wherever people congregate, I'm going to stick that sign and just get a little pre-marketing done, kind of warm them up a little bit. So I, I usually get two more menus on top of that A-frame menu. 
and that's that's the basics of what I do for many. So, while I have you on the subject of signage communication, because that's all a menu is, is communication, right? Let's talk about some other forms of communication. Um, I really like to have a coffee sign that is at least um, head height or above on, on my actual truck itself. I've learned at festivals, if you put your coffee sign at waist or chest height, then on a busy festival, people can't see what your food truck is about because there's a bunch of people standing in front of it. So I like to have my signs a little bit higher and I just have it say coffee, that's it. And uh, the last one I did was those marquee signs on the converted horse trailer. And boy, that came out great. Those ones are really cool because they were battery operated. So while I'm driving down the road, I can turn them on and do marketing. And that was kind of cool. Um, they were also magnetic so I could pop them off and put them on my coffee cart. That horse trailer was just really fun. It was a really cool conversion. Anyways, um, so yeah, coffee sign, head height or above. And then if you're doing a drive up and a walk-in window or walk-up window, on the back of the trailer, it's always good to have like a set of arrows, one arrow that says drive through is this way, one arrow that says walk up is this way. I think that's a good, good form of communication. And then flags, I absolutely love the flags. Um, I didn't think much of them until my barber got them. And then when I saw the amount of business that was brought into his barber shop from those barber flags, you know, the 12 foot kind of skinny things that just flap in the wind. Oh man, he got, I was like, okay, I'm getting some flags. So now I usually do one that says coffee or espresso. And uh, I just put them on either side of the truck and let them flap away. You can get them custom, but I don't see any reason to do it. You're gonna go through those. The wind tends to beat the hell out of them. Same with the sun. So I kind of consider them semi-disposable. Um, I tend to get the generic ones and I've done just fine. I really like the ones that show a picture of the coffee cup. Because again, pictures are worth a thousand words. So, um, hmm. let's see, what else do I got for you on the menu? I don't know, I think that's all I got off the top of my head. Anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, if there's other questions, just throw them in the comment. My name's Vince, I'm with Green Joe Coffee Truck. I have, uh, you know, an ebook on my website. The mobile barista class really goes into this. So if you're looking into getting into some uh, in the coffee truck and you're getting pretty close to pulling the trigger, um, I would do the. I would really look into that mobile barista class. Basically, I just bring you through the training program that I train my baristas. I always train my baristas from the ground up. Um, I, I I tend to not hire with experience. I find that often it brings. Um, two things it brings bad habits and burnout with it so what I gain in um, minimizing my training time I lose in the long run by having someone that's pissed off about their job and that's uh, not doing it the way I want them to so I just learn to train people from the ground up and in my mobile barista class you get that training I just train you from the ground up here's how you do uh, espresso shots here's how you um, adjust your grinder. Here's how we do catering, like all that jazz. Okay, cool. That's it. My name's Vince. Thanks for checking me out.